The following presentation is a production of Ride the Wave Media. Hello, and welcome to the inner workings of the not so genius mind. I'm your host, the not so genius, Amanda McCombs. And, you know, you're just kind of stuck with me today. Um, we're diving deep, as we usually do, into the ordinary mind to uncover extraordinary insights and find a fresh and unique perspective on healing and rediscovering life. Um, there has been kind of a pause in my recording. I want to try to start my episodes by talking about um, maybe something that I did since my last recording that helped me to take care of myself because we don't even know what that looks like anymore, right? Um, I've been doing a lot of things to take care of myself, really. But one of those was I had to not record for a little bit. Um, I was really, really deep in my grief and it made me really, really sick. Like physically sick. I've been in and out of the hospital. Um, and I did feel well enough to go down to Vegas, to go to the Mrs. America pageant. I'm really glad I did. I missed part of it but I got to do a watch party and still see it on TV with some of my sash sisters and I'm so glad I did it really opened up my eyes to just like a lot of a lot of what it's all working towards you know um part of why I've been so sick is a, excuse me the anniversary of my mom's death she passed away about a year ago, but then all the weeks afterwards, um, I was grieving really hard, right? And it was first her passing and then a couple weeks later her funeral and mentally my brain just kind of prepared like, oh, it's her birthday and her birthday is when we had our last phone call and then, um, after that, she died. So I was trying to push through and, you know, do what I could, but I still, I got so sick. And, you know, I'll explain more of that later. But um, I found a great therapist. I've been using BetterHelp. If you hear them yelling, it's my cat, Yum Yen. He's half Ming Kim and thinks he is the king of everything. And I kind of maybe treat him like he is because I love him very, very much. He ran away a few times. Anyway, more about that later. Um, so since my mom died, and I've just, I just barely talked to my therapist about this. So since my mom died, I've really been avoiding a lot of things that I used to do. Um, like cooking and baking I have a really hard time with um and I was I, I was gonna make a joke about how um I baked I did I baked a cake with my kids I got homework to um make something for my therapist and I actually baked a cake with my kiddos and it just stirred up a lot of memories for me you know, because the baking of the cake and the stirring, never mind. Um, but it really did. It brought up a lot for me. Um, and I really had to feel all those things still. And I miss her. And I miss her a lot. And then I realized that, um, like my therapist asked me, what... Um, what memories I had with my mom. And I kind of froze, partly because I didn't want to feel any of the things, and also because, like, I just kind of was drawing a blank, right? And I just thought of really simple, like, I I didn't think about all the big vacations that we took. Like, she and I would do 
road trips. Um, but like, that's not what it was all about, you know? It was about um, spending time together. And she taught me a lot of what I know in the kitchen. And she taught me a lot about just food in general. Um, we had different places that we liked to go and get food together. And then I try to go to those places now and it's really hard. So I know it's like, it takes time. And you grow around your grief. Um, right? Isn't that how it goes? I just have, I have a lot of, a lot of things of hers. And part of it is because she gave me a lot so that I could get started. Real. And, um... I couldn't wait to get out of that house, right? I didn't like how she treated me, but there were some really awful things. Like there were ways that she was very supportive and that there were ways that she was hurtful. And the hurtful things really hurt a lot. And those things hurt too. So it was just better not to feel anything. Um, so yesterday, the day before this recording, I did go up to the property where everything had burned down and they're rebuilding. Um, it's a beautiful house. They've worked really hard on designing it. My mom was helping pick things out and put things together. Um, and the garden is still growing. There's grapes and corn and berries and all kinds of other stuff. I took my son with me and you know, it was hard to explain to him how and why I'm crying, right? Because he doesn't he doesn't remember my mom. Or um, if he is still really little, I mean, the idea of her is just kind of dear. So we got to spend some time together. That was awesome. And mm -hmm. there's some did you see noise? Oh, it's just my kiddo with some cars. Anyway, we, I took my son up there with me. We got to have a couple of the apples from the apple tree. And like I spent a lot of time up there when I was a single mom. So even though I have some really, really big, deep feelings about just being up there in general, like I had to, power through and heal. You know, she's everywhere and nowhere. Uh -huh. Because I, so much of who I am is because of her and because of the time that we spent together and baking the cake out. So thank you, therapist lady. But, um, you know, baby steps. Maybe I'll make something else. It's also kind of hard, you know. Um, and I know Grace has been holding me back because I did. It delayed my trip down to Mrs. America, and I had been planning to go the whole time. I'll have to do a whole other podcast episode about um, the Mrs. America project. It was really, it was really cool to watch. There was actually three different ones to watch. And it was, the energy there was great. I think my favorite thing, and I'll, I'll just tell this right now, spoiler, not really spoiler, but um, our Utah Sash sisters really show up for each other and cheer for each other. It was great to see them rooting for each other on stage. It just made me really happy. Um, and I think that's the big reason why, you know, I want to keep going and I want to keep doing this. Um, I also was just diagnosed with liver disease. The non-alcoholic kind. There's an alcoholic kind and the non-alcoholic kind. And I have the one without alcohol because it's from 
Let's see. I've had polycystic ovarian syndrome and then and endometriosis and adenomyosis and just like everything you could have wrong go wrong in my tummy. And I've had surgery after surgery after surgery. And what do you get after surgery? You get Advil. What does your doctor tell you to take when you're in pain? Ibuprofen. Right? Um, Because my tummy hurt. And I come to find out it's been hurting all this time because my liver is mad. So um, I'm on some fun diet protocols that I'm navigating. And so, you know, food food was just kind of scary for a little bit. I'm uncomfortable. I'm tired. Um, and, you know, there comes a whole other grief when you're dealing with chronic medical issues. Um it's not a death sentence. This is a, it's not permanent right now. Like it's not bad enough that I have scarring or anything, but um, my doctor and the team are just totally on top of things to really help me get healthy so that I can be on track for this pageant. Cause let's face it, I was not taking care of myself. And I don't think a lot of us really are. Like, if we're really thinking about it, if we're being honest, we're not. Um, So, yeah. Anyway, I am glad that I went up to my mom's property. There's, like, a lot. There's so much more that I have to get through and do. But um, I was able to kind of literally unpack some feelings, right? I was able to unpack some memories and, you know, you kind of have to, I just kept thinking with all this stuff that she pulled from the wreckage of this fire. If my house was on fire and I had to go through everything afterwards, I had to filter through the ashes instead of through the rubble. What would I keep? What would I, what would I have to decide if it was worth keeping or not? What would end up with the garbage? There's so many things that I know that she pulled aside and like had good intentions for, but. Some of it's just taught it's ruined. And I think, you know, just grab what you can. So, anyway, if you listened this far, thank you so much. Um, follow on Instagram at notsogenius. You can message me if you're interested in any kind of collaboration, if you want to interview or discuss products or therapy services or things like that. I would love to have you on board. Um, and again, take care of yourselves. It's a crazy world out there.